Let us prepare our hearts for worship with the call to worship. God loves us with a steadfast love. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God loves us so much that he gave us his only son. Let us believe and have life everlasting. And together we light the Christ candle to remind us that God is always with us. Good morning and welcome to Paul Memorial on this beautiful Sunday. We're so glad you could join us for our virtual worship. We have a few announcements to remind you about of events going on in the life of Paulin. Just a reminder that next Sunday, March 21st, we will have our annual general meeting. The Zoom code will be going out next week and we would love it if you could join us. If you have not received your report, please contact me as soon as possible and I'll make sure that you get one. We'd also like to remind you that there will be no virtual Bible study this week. We will pick up the following week, Wednesday nights at 7. Now let us come before our God. Let us pray. Father of everlasting love, we gather our hearts and minds before you now in a time of prayer and reflection as we step away from our busy life to find rest for our weary souls. And so we ask that you would once again listen to your children praying. Creator God, we praise you this morning for the gift of knowing you. We thank you for the good news that you have never been a distant God for you long to walk with your people. And throughout the ages, you've not only saved those who you love, but you've helped prepare them and guide them to receive the wonderful gift of your only son, so that they could join in the celebration of the salvation of our broken world. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of Jesus. We praise you, Lord, the word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. For Christ became one of us, experiencing all that it meant to be human for our sake. As Jesus came to know hunger and thirst, he embraced both the good and the bad. And for our sake, Christ went to the cross so that we could be forever set free from the power of sin and death forever. We thank and praise you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus Christ, 
for he came to show us how much you love us. And this love has forever changed our world for the better. For because Jesus lives, so too shall all of your people. We give you thanks this day, loving God, for your continuing being part of our everyday life. As you sent your Holy Spirit to rest upon our hearts so that we might find the strength we need to keep moving forward on our journey towards the coming kingdom of heaven. At this time, loving God, we turn our thoughts and prayers to the world around us, as we trust in your promise to always listen to your people praying. Heavenly Father, it's been one year since our world was changed. One year since we first had to lock down for the sake of our community. We give you thanks for the growth that has happened during this year, for the mission projects that were created to suit this strange and unique need in the community, for the new ways your spirit inspired us to reach out and serve. We confess this year has been hard on all of us, but we thank you for giving us all that we need to keep moving forward. We pray today for the families of those who lost a loved one during this pandemic. Be with them during this time of sorrow. We pray for those who are still suffering from this illness and those who will have lasting impact on their lives because of COVID-19. We continue to pray for all of our frontline responders, those who boldly work during this time so our community is able to be looked after. We pray for those who work in the hospital, who daily see firsthand how dangerous this pandemic can be. Help us, we pray, Lord, to stay strong, to hold on to the good news that soon this pandemic will end and that one day we'll be able to meet again in person. We pray, loving God, for the nations that are struggling with this pandemic. We pray for Brazil that's being hit the hardest right now. We pray for those who have not yet received any vaccines. Help us, Lord, to look beyond our own borders, to seek to share what we have so that all might be safe. Teach us anew how to love as Jesus loves, so we can make sure that no one gets left behind or forgotten. Lastly, Father, we pray for ourselves. Help us to stay strong in our faith. Teach us how to let your love change our lives and make us bold enough to share your love with the world around us for we know there are still many places and people who need to hear the good news of your Son. All this we pray in Jesus' name, as together we sing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for
It's now time for the children of God's children's story. Now I have a question for you. Have you ever played the game, How Much Do You Love Me? It's a simple game I played with my parents when I was little. And you start off, you know, do you love me this much? My parents would go, yes, I love you this much. And a little bit later I go, well, that's good that you love me this much, but do you love me this much? And so it would go on. And we keep trying to figure out and try to figure out how much our parents loved us. And having a sister, as most siblings did, we periodically tried to see which parent loved which one of us more. Surprisingly, we found out that they loved us equally, which is a good thing, and I think it's a truth that most parents or most kids find out their parents love them. But have you ever asked how much God loves you? Could you imagine standing before the heavens and going, God, do you love me this much? And God says, yes, I love you. Okay, God, do you love me this much? And God would say, yes, I love you that much and more. Can you imagine how much more God would love us? Well, in scripture, we're told the answer. God loves us so much that Jesus went to the cross and extended his hands as far as he could reach to show the world how much he loves us. Isn't it amazing to know that someone loves you so much that he was willing to die for you, to resurrect for you, and to welcome you to your eternal home? This is how much God loves us. God loves us so much that he gave us his only son so that all of our past mistakes could be forgiven so that you and I and everyone else could be set on a right path, a path that would lead us to be in God's kingdom, a place where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, and no more loss. That's an amazing, powerful love. That's a love so big it surrounded the whole earth. And that's a love that God has for you and for me and for everyone. In scripture, we hear God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loved us enough to give us Jesus. And in response, we're called to share this love with the world around us. For there are still many places and people who need to be told that God loves them so much that he sent Jesus and Jesus' people to find them and share this good news. And what better news for us to remember and celebrate than God loves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. This morning's readings are from Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, and the ruler of the kingdom of air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raises us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Jesus Christ, in order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by his grace you have been saved, through faith, And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ to do good works, which God prepares in advance for us to do. 
The second reading is from the New Testament, John 3, 14 to 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because of their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us come before God. Let us pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. John 3:16. Many of us know this part of scripture by heart, as it's one of the very first verses we learn in Sunday school. As John 3:16 is a great summary to celebrate and remind us of what God has done for us. This is why, for a time, you would often see signs at big sporting events proclaiming the love of a team or a player and underneath the words John 3.16. As a writer hoped, this would help people see the good news of the gospel. And truthfully, I'm not really sure how effective this type of evangelism is, but I was never big into sports. And I have a sinking feeling that if I came here at Paulin and walked around with a sign proclaiming John 3.16, you wouldn't accept that as a sermon, no matter how tempting it might be some weeks. And the reason behind this is simple. While John 3.16 is a wonderful starting point for someone to learn about how much God loves them, it's not the end of their faith journey as the Bible is filled with many more stories and lessons than just this one verse taken from the Gospel of John. And if we want to grow deeper in our understanding of God's great love, we need to move past just this one quote of scripture so that we can seek to truly understand what God has done for us out of love. As there is more to the story than Jesus coming to live among us, and we're called to do more in response to God's love than just hold a sign at a baseball game. To truly understand why God gave us his only son, we first need to understand why we needed Christ in the first place. I know if I asked you, many of you would be able to explain why you need Christ in your life. And to be honest, your answers will be better than anything I could say from the pulpit because those words come directly from your heart. As each and every one of you who hear this message has your own personal reason as to why you need Christ in your life. And this is wonderful. Whereas from the pulpit, I tend to stay more general when listing off the reasons why the world needs or needed and still needs today to hear the good news of John 3.16. For when people preach, we try to, tent, to throw the, the net as wide as possible so that all who hear them speak can find something that relates to their life right now rather than trying to preach to just one person. When we stand up here, we trust the Holy Spirit will use our words for God's glory. And so I invite you, once this worship service is over, take a moment or two to write down your own reason as to why you need God in your life. Make a short or long list and then take time to give thanks to the Lord for what he has done for you personally, as this is a great spiritual discipline to add to your own worship life. But back to the reasons, well, the more general reasons why God gave us Jesus. He gave us his son because he loves us. He loves us so much that he couldn't bear the gap that was growing wider and wider between God and his creation, between him and us. If you remember your Sunday school lesson, you'll remember that you and I were created in God's image and proclaimed good. And at one point in our human history, we lived in the garden with our Lord. There was no separation between us and God. 
This is what made the garden paradise. We were with God. Or at least that was the case until sin came into the picture. As one human, once humankind turned its back against God's ways, they became separate from God. And over countless generations, the gap only widened. As there was no way that any man or woman was able to fill, fill in the gap between God and humankind. As the gap was created with sin, and the cost of sin is being separated from our Lord. And this separation hurts. And from the first sin, we've been trying our hardest to heal this internal wound that we all suffer from. Because we were made in God's image, we were made to have a wonderful and life-giving relationship with our God. And so over time, rules were created and sacrifices given in the hopes of mending this relationship in hopes of attempting to fill the gap created between God and his people. But no matter how righteous they were, the gap could not be filled. As none of us are able to live a perfect life, no one today or even in the past was born without sin. And so none of us knew how to get back into a right relationship with God by ourself. And so God, in his mercy, saw the suffering of his people and reached out his hand in love. For God knew the pain we feel being separated from him as he felt it himself because he loves us with a love that would forever change our world for the better. Because God loves you and I, God gave us Jesus. God himself came and lived among us, laying down his glory in exchange for a cross, as Christ came to once and for all pay the price for our transgression. As Jesus, God's love made flesh, lay out his hands on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, for the healing of all nations. God loves us so much that he came to pay the price for our transgressions so that you and I could be welcomed once more into the kingdom of heaven. This is the good news that John 3.16 proclaims, that God loves us so much, he was willing to take upon our suffering, our sense of being cut off from God. For Christ took this all upon himself, going as far as the cross and the grave, so we would not need to bear the pain any longer. And he did it for all of us, because he loves us with a love that will never let us go. This is the good news of the gospel, that God loves us so much, he gave us Jesus to show us how to live, to forever defeat the power of sin and death, to bring us into new life with our great creator. And our God did all of this out of love, even while we were still lost in sin. Just like God commanded Moses to do so long ago to bring healing to his people, Christ, out of love, allowed himself to be raised high on a cross, so the world could be saved. What greater love can there be that God was willing to come and set us free, to offer to pay the price for our transgression? And all of this was done for you and I as a gift. 
a gift without cost, given to us by our great creator. But just because this grace was given as a gift, it doesn't mean we're not called to respond to this wonderful thing that God has done for us. For although we are saved by God's grace alone, by God's intervention alone, it doesn't mean that in turn we are called to sin boldly, for we know we have been forgiven. Nor are we called to just quote scripture without allowing these wonderful words of life to have a lasting impact on our lives. For out of love, God gave us his only son. He gave us salvation so that we in turn are called to respond to this great gift by allowing the teachings of Jesus to transform us from who we are now into something even better, something more life-giving, as we as followers of Jesus are called to allow his gift to transform us from a stranger into a holy family, so that in turn we can change the world around us by helping to raise up the downtrodden, to help heal the sick, to help speak up for the vulnerable, We're called to be the ones who dare to shine Christ's holy light in the world around us so that we can chase away the shadows of this passing world and prepare the way for the coming kingdom of heaven. We're called to speak peace and do good, not so that we might somehow earn our salvation, but instead as a response to what God has first done for us out of love. Today, Christ asked us to dare to love who he loves, to dare to become something more than what we are right now, because our world still needs to hear the good news. There are people who still need to know that God loves them, And now it's our job as the children of the living God to be Christ's hands and feet in the world around us so that one day heaven and earth will be as one. But until that day comes, let us draw strength from the promise that God has given to us and remind ourselves daily that God loves us so much that he gave us his only son, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us come before God and let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've given us all that we need to thrive in this world and the one that is yet to come, for you gave us Jesus. And out of response, we offer up to you our tithes and our offerings. Help them to serve your needs and to share your good news. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.